We also, uh, we did this past summer, uh, the Wild Wasp, which um, I don't know if you had a chance to try, but. I did not. Uh, researcher, Dr. Anna Madden at uh, NC State University isolated a fermentable yeast strain off the back of a wasp. And when we heard that, we have our wasp by PA, we, we definitely wanted to, to get involved and try something. And she was nice enough to send us some samples. Nice. Um, and we brewed it up and pitched that yeast. It took uh, probably three or four weeks to finish versus um, wow. you know, normally two weeks or so. Uh, it was much slower acting. I mean, it was going the whole time, but it, it almost looked like a lager when it was fermenting. It was not rapid, violent fermentation and done. It was just a steady, you know, bloop, bloop right. the entire time. Um, and it came out surprisingly well. It was, it was sour, not too sour, but um, definitely a, from the wild yeast. Um, and it was hugely popular. Very, very good. We have people all the time asking if we can brew it again, and I would love to if we can uh, get some more yeast. Okay. So, you, so you guys didn't save any yeast from that batch? We've got some samples back there. Um, <coughs> I'm not <coughs> me. quite sure yet if I'm going to be able to grow those up and, right. and actually use those. It's definitely something I would experiment with. That's kind of cool, man. Uh, yeast from a wasp. Yeah. So we have yeast from beards, yeast from wasps. Exactly. <laughs> you can get it from anywhere. Yeah. Everything wants to become beer. That's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I wasn't able to try that. I'll let you know when it comes back out. If we do it again, I'm sure we'll actually bottle it. Um, so we'll have some that'll last longer than, you know, two weeks in the tap room. Right.